Look at that. That is incredible. Really nice, calming room. The first thing I noticed about the bedroom is how high the ceiling is. Oh then. my god. It's like walking into the grudge. <laughs> Kyoto, the soul of Japan. And unfortunately, not without its problems. From the real threat of bankruptcy for the city, with $2 billion of mounting debt, to the loss of the very traditional architecture that gives these streets their breathtaking appeal. Sadly, it's estimated that 800 Machia wooden townhouses are demolished every single year, with the vast majority expected to be lost within the next four decades. While some are lucky to be renovated, the unfortunate truth is in practice, it's far from popular amongst the city's locals as a costly and complex undertaking. We've come to Kyoto to take a look inside an empty townhouse on the brink of demolition and to discover six worrying reasons you might not want to renovate a good old Machia. But we'll also take a look inside a successfully renovated Machia to see how well things can go for those willing to put their passion and their pocket money to the test. Joining us as we explore these two properties is Japan real estate expert and dare I say it, good friend, Alex Shapiro, who I've managed to steal away from Tokyo for the day to take us inside. Good to see you, Alex. Good to see you, too. Tokyo Portfolio himself in mm. Kyoto. Now, a few years ago, I came to Kyoto, did a documentary on the disappearing townhouses, which I think is an absolute tragedy. But one thing I didn't do in that documentary is explain why, why they're being lost. And Alex is going to help us shed some light on that today, right? Basically, the biggest reason is because most of them are completely in disrepair. Everybody thinks of Machia as being these beautifully renovated places that have little bars or guest houses in mm. them. So I'm going to show you a really nicely done one in the beginning, and then after that, I'm going to show you what it looks like before all that happens. Like a real horror story at the start. Yes, definitely. <laughs> all right, well, let's go and take a look at what it could look like after renovation. Our first stop is a street of hidden Machia townhouses that have been renovated from top to bottom, with around $200,000 spent on renovating each property. All right, come on in. Oh, wow. Beautiful woodwork. The temperature just dropped 10 degrees Celsius coming in off the street. It's kind of cool in here. But look at that. That is incredible and you've got the beautiful garden at the back there bringing in some light you know what i like about townhouses is that sense of seclusion that hiddenness what's it called kakure right? yes yeah, so kakure ga is basically the whole idea of like a hidden room or a mm. hidden house somewhere and this definitely embodies that yeah because you can shut all the blinds you can close everything off and you've got your own little piece of calm in the middle of kyoto right and uh, of course you've got a cage here <laughs> where you can place your enemies if you cross paths with me you will end up in the cage and i'll put you in there and I'll sit in the bathtub and... and Where are you going with this? Where am I going with this? Yeah, yeah. The point is, stay out of my way. Police! Police, there's a strange American man here. Oh, it's actually ringing. Oh, it actually yeah, works. Yes, it does work. <laughs> Get done for making a false call. Well, there's a, a nice kitchen here. Got the hob. A massive, excessive table where you can have your TV dinner. You're sitting there. You can watch your abroad in Japan on the couch. What's all this about? The shoji little... So is this it? is called decoration. You ever heard of it? <laughs> what is this concept? It's... Oh, well, another thing you can do with this is to put it in front of the garden because you actually have a view directly into your bath. Oh, so yeah. if you have people come over here... And, and you don't you want... want to go, yeah. That exactly. makes sense. This door's kind of concealed as well into the bathroom. I didn't even notice a minute ago there was a door here. It's kind of blended in. Yeah. But into the bathroom, the hidden bathroom. So these are all... Hinoki wooden panels, right? Yeah, so instead of putting a Hinoki bath in this one, they put a steel bath, that's the old school way of doing it. Right. And then they put the Hinoki walls so you still get the nice smell of a Hinoki a nice bath. nice citrusy smell. It smells like lemons. <laughs> what I really like, again, it's all about the garden. If that garden wasn't here, I think you'd feel a bit claustrophobic, right? Yeah. Historically, like, these gardens are all about ventilation, like ventilating the houses, particularly in hot, humid Kyoto summers. And you can't even ventilate this if you'd like. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. Yeah. We need that if Alex is in here. Yeah. It right. smells like food. <laughs> right. So how much does it cost to actually stay here the night, Alex? It's only $200 a night, which uh, for a place of this size is not too bad. And um, how many people could it fit? I would say three, maybe four if you were small. We'll take a look at the bedrooms in a sec, but how much does it cost to renovate the place as well, roughly? Yeah, so for all four places that he owns, there's three more right next to it, he put in about $500,000, $600,000, so this Jesus. alone was $200,000 just in renovations. And you can check out the other two properties on this road over on Alex's channel, Tokyo Portfolio. But before that, let's go and check upstairs and see what the bedrooms are like. Let's do it. So this building dates back to 1910, mm -hmm. and this beam here is one of the original parts of the house, right? Yeah. 
yeah, look at that, beautiful. And what I love is these stairs are like really big and wide apart. It's all about making that kind of tiny townhouse feel a lot bigger than it is. And also, if you look, you have these lattices in the stairs too, yeah, so that yeah. lets more light down, and that gives it even a bigger look. What are these switches here? What's going on? These are very retro. Yeah, so not only retro, this, if you look at it, it kind of looks like a guitar amp switch or something yeah. like that, and that's because it is. So the owner of this place is a musician, so he decided to put <laughs> some little taste like that into it. That's awesome. Yeah. Let's check out the bedroom. Mm -hmm. The first thing I noticed about the bedroom is how high the ceiling is. Yeah, so this right above us is where the roof is, and normally you would have a ceiling that's a bit lower than that in an mm. attic, but they just completely blew out the attic, so they have it like this. They blew nice. it out. Yes. <laughs> it sounds out. pretty violent. But yes. uh, yeah, it's a good move to do that as well. It makes the second floor feel a lot bigger than it is. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Oh, but, really yeah. nice, calming room. Mm -hmm. The light, the wood. Come on over here. Ooh. So we have a kind of living room area over yeah. here. Yeah, the second sitting room, complete with retro 70s amp switches. That's so satisfying. That you just love those, don't you? I do love it, but not as much as this phone. <laughs> I love this phone. Look at that. That's pretty bad. Oh, it's... it is on the hook. Careful. Let's not touch. Touch things. Yes. So um, while this does look like a living room, this is in fact a pullout. So this could become the third bed for you. Oh, of course, it's a safer bed. Yeah, you yeah. Can fit either one big person or two small people. You decide, choose your own adventure. But the main important thing is, why are there not one, not two, but three <laughs> windows here? What the hell's going on there? Well, this is specifically for insulation. This right, is right. Amachia. This is probably about 100 years old or so. So mm. if you think about it, it's going to be cold. It's made of wood. Mm. So they have to put this in or else it's going to be absolutely freezing. In right, right. This place is the ideal version of what people think of when they think of a renovated Machia. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, so uh, let's go see what an unrenovated Machia looks like. How bad can it really be? Oh good God, to say my lungs weren't ready for this would be an understatement as we venture inside an empty townhouse to uncover six reasons not to buy a Machia, especially this one. Okay, it's a bit different than the first one we just did. Oh did. my God, it's like walking into the grudge film set. Yes. What is this, Alex? It's a little bit scary, I will say that. I think you'll be going first down, the, yeah. down that corridor. Yeah, this... it's, it's like a time slip into the 1960s or something. Okay, so first off, this place is from the 1920s, okay. 1926 to be. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exact. And uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go down there right away. Let's go this way, it's a bit brighter. So uh, if you look right down there, here, go take a look. I want you to notice something. Just look at the frame of the door. Oh god, yeah, it's it's like crooked. It's off. completely crooked. Yeah. <laughs> off slightly, yeah. So this is a very common thing in older places like this in Japan. It's made completely out of wood, no nails or anything like that. So a lot of the times they'll start to kind of tilt to the side. Think the Leaning Tower of Pisa or something like that. Very reassuring. Very reassuring. So <laughs> you can actually see that happening right yeah, yeah. over here. But the whole place could just completely tilt over. the world's over. biggest Jenga set. Wait, is it going to be all right in here for us? I Did think so, yeah, yeah. Just kind of like walk on the edges of the floor. Okay. So there's no earthquakes today. <laughs> yes, yes. But let's come on in. It's very dark in here. <laughs> it is. Chris, if you ever wanted to do a horror film, I think this would be a great place to shoot it. I mean, yeah. Weirdly, the, the tatami is not in too bad condition. <laughs> okay, the well... Wall, the walls are a bit moldy. So how much is this place? So it's about 70 square meters or 750 square feet ish, mm, it's right? Good size. Yeah, it's a decent yeah. size, over two stories, and it's close to the nearest station, maybe about five or six minutes. So it's a good area, right? This place is 42 million yen. Uh, so three hundred eighty thousand dollars. What? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean the renovation costs alone, one hundred fifty thousand dollars plus. At least, at least. So this is the second reason not to get an unrenovated one because you're going to be putting so much money into it. I'd say for something of this size, you'd be looking at about two hundred thousand dollars to make it completely, yeah, good. So second reason. Bankruptcy. Yeah. yeah. One modern convenience that this place does have. A stained yellow intercom. Yes, so yes, that is an intercom system. It's not on right now, but if somebody's outside, they just put the uh, bell on and you can see their little face. When they there. sell these, they're like white. Uh, that's why it worries me just how yellow that is. Yeah, that would be a lot uh, of cigarette smoke probably. I, don't, I need to wash my hands now. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's go see the kitchen. Whoa. <laughs> yes, this is the kitchen, and you can actually see, if you look over here, that Skyline. it kind of goes, yeah, all the way up to this. Oh, yeah. So this kind of kitchen is called the Hashiri Niwa, so basically the running garden, right? That's if you're literally translated. But you can see, you can basically run all the way from the entrance ah. to the back, so Hashiri. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and hence uh, why they call it this. But this is a very old school way of doing kitchens. Yeah, I mean, the wallpaper alone looks like the 1920s personified, doesn't it? So though this house is from the 1920s, the kitchen right here has been pretty recently renovated. You want to take a look? Uh, recent, eh? It says right here Showa 52, oh, so... Oh, no. No, no. So that would be, I think, the 1970s, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. But uh, Chris, as you can see, you have plenty of counter space <laughs> over here. The, uh, uh, yeah. And mold. And uh, it's mold. <laughs> I mean, this is just horrible. I, I have a powerful imagination. But <laughs> even I don't know how the world of fuck you would renovate this kitchen to make it look bearable. Well, let's go and take a look at the bathroom. It can't be much worse than this. This is the dodgiest floor in existence. Listen to, oh my God. Can it even take my weight? Hello. What a horrible spectacle this is. Isn't this amazing? <laughs> no, 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 it's that. <laughs> yeah, the water's off. But you've got your metal bath. Yeah, like, so this is the one. same kind of bath as was in the first place, if you remember. A little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. I think I could fit in eh? And a lot bit older. No, don't even try. <laughs> my knees are about to fall off at this point, so. And a little bit of mold there. A lot of bit mold, and a couple of spiders over here, too. Yeah. yeah. Chris, did I mention that this place has a garden, by a the way? A garden? Yes, it's right oh. over here. Okay. A garden full of rubbish and lots of cans of things and a very decrepit air conditioning unit. I don't even know if they can renovate this to the point that it's a nice garden, like a rock garden. Mm. I get the sense that renovating this place is not just expensive, but very much impossible in some respects. Yes, of course, because you have some major structural issues with this place. He's going to have to put a lot of money into it. And also, you're not even sure if you're going to be able to renovate it. Sometimes the structural issues are so bad that you have to actually tear down the entire place and rebuild. And the problem with these places a lot of the times mm. is that the laws don't allow you to rebuild it. So basically, you're just stuck with a house that you can't do anything with. Yeah. This is what I like to call the sinister room. It reminds me of that uh, that arcade game, Chor Chabon Gaishi, where you flip the table. It's already done for you. <laughs> yeah, it's done. Yeah, and then even he, hit the chandelier. And then he went fucking mental on the light as well, because that is also a little bit screwed. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is a great film set. Look mm -hmm. at that. Tell us some more things about why not to buy this house, Alex. So if you look at it from the outside, you can see that they actually share a wall with you. So you can hear them basically breathing at night. So it's that kind of... I mean, you heard people just now, right? <laughs> I did hear something, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's all one big terrace house. Yes, so, more or less. And the yeah. walls are like a joke size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, let's go and look at the upstairs of this fine residence and see what we can find. Yes. So the trick when coming up decrepit houses and on the stairs, I can feel the planks literally bending under my foot. And you've got to, the trick is to stand on the edge of it, not in the center where it's most vulnerable, especially given how old these planks are. Do I even dare touch this thing? Yeah, no, don't, 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 just keep going. You're gonna hurt yourself. This is actually quite nice. Nice pattern there, nice design. Yeah. Not so sure about everything else. Uh, and I'm going to stand on the edges of the tummy mat as well. Very good points, yes. You don't want to be in the middle on these tummies. I cannot oh, I can feel say... this one like going up, like down, like tread on it. Again, don't step on that too hard. So as you can see up here, I thought it was a five bedroom. It's actually more of a six bedroom, although this one has no windows whatsoever. Six bedrooms. This is a six bedroom. So yeah, about 10 people probably lived in here at once at some point. How uh, is that possible? I don't know. And shared one bathroom, by the way. That's the standard way of doing it in Japan. So this is just a wardrobe with lady birds on it. Yeah, this could have been a kid's <laughs> room at some points. Yeah. So that is one nice thing about Japanese houses, especially the older ones, is that they have these massive closets to put the futons into. Well, it looks like there's a fire in this room. I am right up onto the floor there, it's all black. Yeah, I didn't even notice that. That's a very good point. So with these older buildings, though, you just buy them as is. You have no idea about any of the, like, things that happened in the past. Was it flooded? Was there a fire? Anything like mm. that. You really don't know, you just kind of have to look at it. And what I, I'm looking, and what I'm seeing is not particularly That's good. That's ash. <laughs> That's definitely ash. I love the way they've left the creepiest looking bit of artwork in the house. And they've probably thought, oh yeah, this will, this will definitely sweeten the deal. That's all what people want. We won't leave anything in the house, just the, the creepy doll thing um, and the flame grilled cupboard. But look at this, wonderful Kyoto views. Are you ready viewers? Oh gosh, it's amazing. That's it. Car park. 
There's not much insulation here though, Alex, and I feel like we need it because it's very, very cold in yeah. here. Yeah, so if you remember from the first place, there were three windows. Mm. Well, this is what the original windows probably single looks like. Single glazing. Yes, very, very <laughs> single glazing, and very, very thin. <laughs> And the final cupboard, again, looks like a bonfire took place yeah, in here. Yeah, this is definitely the most horror-esque of the three. Mm. But this this actually looks kind of deceptively all right. Do I, again, I said earlier, I have a powerful imagination, but even I don't know quite how you could renovate this in a way that was good. Yeah, watch and your the foot. floor <laughs> has a hole in it. So be careful if you, if you walk around a decrepit house from the 1920s. I don't know how they could renovate this without spending like an incomprehensible sum of money. Yeah, right? I mean, this place is about $350,000, $380,000. You're going to put about half of that into just renovations. So it's going to be a lot more than what you expected. And then you don't know structurally if it's going to be stable or not. One earthquake could come and the whole thing could fall down. I don't know. It just feels like too risky to actually invest in such a place. Yeah. Would but... you do it? No. <laughs> no, I don't think I would either. But no. I'm all I'm completely down for renovation, but uh, this is a stretch of the imagination a little bit too far, I think. I'd yeah. say so. So the last time I was in Kyoto, I did a documentary on Kyoto's disappearing townhouses and what a tragedy it is. I think it is, but like now I understand it. Now I get the reality of it. It's not easy to renovate something like this that's over 100 years old, thoroughly decrepit, falling apart, you know, I kind of get it. I kind of see the reality of it now. Yeah, and that's not to say that all places are like this, but mm. most of the places that you'll find on the market are going to be in this kind of mm. shape. So you really, really have to make sure you're finding the right one before you buy it. This is a real bottom of the barrel townhouse. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's been cool looking around it. I kind of want to get out before an earthquake comes and the slanty doorway finishes us off. Thank you so much, Alex, as always, for showing us around. You can check out Alex's Tokyo portfolio over on his channel and check out the houses that we uh, we didn't go in. But for now, let's, uh, let's get out of here before the grudge fucking comes out the corner. Yeah. That noise. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Uh, that was horrible. I started my business uh, for uh, five years ago. Five years. Mm -hmm. And you've got 20 properties now. Yes, 20. So a lot of properties in a very short space of time. Yes. <laughs> Why so many? Because uh, you know I like some, something hard, hard job. If I can make a success in the uh, rebuilding the material, I can stay in Kyoto and live in Kyoto. <laughs>